Hello, Soul Tribe, my spiritual warriors, little earth angels. Welcome back. Another round of reading and coffee with Captain Reed. <clears throat> Slurp free. Slurp free coffee. Welcome to my channel, Spiritual Guidance 1111. Uh, please read my description and blah, blah, blah. Oh, say it every, every video. I got some disclaimers. Opinionated, okay? I am opinionated. I am not giving advice. So don't take it as advice. You can take my opinion, but don't take the advice. If, if that's what you think it is. I need to get off of this because I can I can make this last for an hour we're talking about. <laughs> anyway, um, I do have a, let's see, I have a dream from Gladys that I'm going to interpret for her. I have uh, Mary asked a question, a.k.a. Elena, a.k.a. Elena. What do we need to do now? Uh, asked a, a another uh, another question, so we'll cover that if we can. And we should because the reading is not going to be very long. I'm going to do a a diamond spread with the uh, synchronicities oracle, um, and I'll show you what the box looks like. This is what the box looks like. Neat little deck. Very neat little deck. I'm going to do a diamond spread. I did a, a shuffle of my cards. I prayed over the cards also. On the tarot, I'm going to use my tarot deck. And I'm going to do a a 18 card block. Uh, 18 card block, as you all know. Past, present, future, near past, present, near, very near future, like tomorrow. Okay. I have to go and blow that hole. Okay. As I was saying, uh, the, uh, actually it's called a nine, a nine card block. I use two cards per, per stack, which is 18. Uh, nine. It's it's an awakening block. It's it's supposed to uh, give you an idea of of awakening. Is as you know something a knowing something is going to tell you. Hopefully, uh, hmm. I have went back and looked at my comments. I'm going to do it again when I'm finished with this. We uh, and. Uh, Hey, we'll go from there. Let's let's start off our our reading, and we'll go from there. I want to t say thank you to my subscribers. I appreciate it immensely. Uh, I I would have to go back and look, but I'm going to post it when I'm finished with this. I'm going to post the updated uh, amount for the amount for November is not going to change. It's, it's still the same, but the amount. For that we've made so far for December in the 1212 portal. I put a post on my community board about the portal, 1212 portal. Today, 120. If you have to make a decision, make a choice, do it today. Today is a good time for you to do this because 12, 12, 12 reduces down to six. One and two is three. Three plus three is six. And six in spirituality, numerology, is make a choice. You're going to make a choice. So it's a good day to make that choice. Um, uh, let's see where I was going with this. Yes. Uh, anyway, we're going to start off our reading strength. Strength. Spiritual guidance. I like spiritual guidance. Uh, change. Hmm. I think someone needs the strength to change, to go 
back towards spirituality. I think that's what you need. You need soul tribe, spiritual warriors. If you have departed from the path of spirituality, you need the strength. Are you looking for the strength? Perhaps you're praying for the strength to go back to that. Dreamer. Roots. River. I I see here that you were obviously at one time you did walk away from the path, the spiritual path. You've been spiritual all along. You just walked away from it. This is going to resonate with someone. You have you have always been a spiritual person, ever since you were young. May not have been religious. There's a big difference, but. Um, you were very spiritual. You have deep roots in spirituality. And a, a, the river, it's like spirituality, the, what, the river, a river itself in spirituality is nourishment. It, it uh, waters the, when the, the, the river is what builds it distributes uh, sediment. It replenishes the the uh, nutrients for the land. Helps things grow. Waters the. It gives water and substance to plants and animals. Uh, and this has made you emotional because the river is water, and it, 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 there's some emotion here. This is you have had. You have been, you have had an emotional transformation. Something has caused you to be extremely emotional. Spiritualize, I'm saying. Uh, and it could be religious too. This, this, because you can be religious and spiritual. You can be that. Some people are religious and not spiritual at all. I've explained that to you before, so we're not going to cover that again. The raven. The raven lands on top of dreamer. You've had some messages. The raven, a raven in spirituality is a messenger. They deliver messages. Yes. And they are very persistent. They are very intelligent. Smart. Smart. They... Perhaps you've dreamed of, of ravens, but definitely you've received messages in dreams. And it is is perhaps about your roots, where things that happen to you. The river, this is different. Planting seeds lands on top of dreamer. And roots. Bloom. Whatever you're doing, you received them you've received messages about something to do with uh, planting seeds and bloom. Huh. You're going to do something that is going to, or you are the raven. You are delivering messages, possibly. You could be delivering messages that's planting seeds. You're giving messages to others as, let's say you're a healer. Because of the things that happen to you within your life, you're helping others heal that's planting seeds. You're planting seeds in people. And when people begin to bloom and feel better about themselves, that is the bloom itself. You, you plant the seeds and people's lives change. And that is the bloom. That's the 
the reward of the seeds that are planted, the harvest that the seeds that are planted. Faith. Yes, you're, that's exactly what it is. You are the raven. You're, you're delivering messages of faith. And, and it's, yes, that's exactly what this is. It is a river of faith that you are, you like teaching people. You're, uh, it's one way or another, just by people that are talking. I have a, I have a friend, and she is a, a stylist, beautician, whatever you want to call it. Nowadays, I'm not sure what they call it. If, uh, fix your hair technician. Uh, obviously, I wouldn't need that, but. <laughs> they, 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 they all used to be called beauticians, and now they may be called something else. But I have a a nephew and his wife, beautiful woman, beautiful person, and she owns a. She's a stylist. She's, but this friend I have, uh, things has happened. Has happened to her over over her life. And undoubtedly, she talks to people through her her business, stylist, cuts hair, things like that. And sometimes the, the person that you, this person can heal someone just with a, a micro conversation, something that will change their life just by saying and inspiring, giving them an, an inspiring message for the day. Sometimes that's all it takes. And I believe that this person, is, it, she may not know it, but she's a healer. And she heals people just by talking to them. Not very, and, and by her own admission, she's not really religious. She's just a very spiritual individual. And she's going to know who I'm talking about when um, an ego lands on top of Raven, I think you're uh, in spirituality. Like I said, a Raven is a messenger. They are very intelligent, very smart, smart, smart. An eagle is a, in spirituality, is a, a, it's a bird of prey. It, um, very, very strong, confident, beautiful bird, beautiful, uh, soars extremely high. I, I don't know the exact number, but they sold uh, 10,000, 12,000 feet. Very, very high. Uh, and what this means is uh, interpreted in, in these cards is that you're soaring. Whoever, soul tribe, whoever this is going to resonate with, you're soaring. You're, you're you are flying so high, you're vibing so high right now, your vibrations are so high that you would break glass. Yes. You're receiving the messages. You are the messenger. You are the message. The raven is you. You are the message. Artist. You are an artist. Um, it lands next to eagle on top of the raven and planting seeds. This is, um, this card right here, it tells me that you're very creative. You, you are very creative as in an artist. Whatever you do, whatever you do. If you sing, you're very inspiring. You're, you're very good at what you do. You are considered an artist at what you do. Mm -hmm. Communication. Whatever you're doing is communicating your your uh, choice of of work, art, artists, your what whatever you create, it has something to do with communication. You talk to people. Absolutely, you're you're a communicator, and a good one. A good one. You inspire people. You 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 bring them up to your level. You don't put them down. It's one of those situations you give them faith when they have none. You help the helpless. Give hope to the hopeless. You're a giver. You're not a taker. 
Yes, you're a dreamer. And through those dreams, you receive messages. And this has went back a long time to your roots, all the way back into your roots. Possibly, uh, it, it, this is a a generational thing, meaning that you you have family that were dreamers, uh, gifted. Uh, you are maybe a seer or a like I said, a healer. In South Louisiana, we call that three thirds. We possibly a three third, meaning that you heal people, not just uh, this physical healing. Mean that you heal fever, sunstroke, things like that, warts, things like that. You and the problem with healers, some healers, not all, some healers, in the physical aspect of it, you take what someone has. It's very. It's, it can be dangerous. It can you can you have to be careful with that because you take whatever when you treat them, you absorb what they have. That energy comes to you. So that being said, it's also emotional. You're an emotional healer. You are very good emotional healer too. Very good. You make people feel good about themselves. Trust. People trust you. As a communicator. As, as an artist that communicates, as someone that does this, they trust you. They trust what you say. Mm -hmm. Very, very trustworthy. There's a hummingbird right here. On this one, there's a butterfly. In the communication, there's a butterfly. And on the communication card, I'm saying there's a butterfly. Uh, and more than one. Actually, there's a few butterflies here. But butterflies are indicative of transformation. They... Uh, they come out of the cocoon and, and they become they are a butterfly mm -hmm. and on the trust card there's a hummingbird hummingbirds are uh, there's a flower and a hummingbird you are the flower Whoever this is, the communicator is the flower, and what you com what you are communicating, as, as interpreted in this spread, is you are you are communicating honey or nectar, sugar, and that hummingbird is coming to you. The flower don't go to them; they come to the to the flower. They come to to uh, yes, trust. Com oh, a lot of people are watching your community. There's a lot of people, an immense amount of people that are, that's, yeah, following this trust card. There's a lot of people that trust what you say, that are listening to what you say too, the community. There's birds all over this card, birds all over. Storyteller, you're an awesome storyteller. Whoever this is has something to do with communication. You're an artist. You tell stories. You're a good. You're a good communicator. Yes. There's an owl. You're uh, whoever this is going to resonate with. You're very wise. Have a lot of wisdom. You have a good heart. There's a heart on this card. Uh, you you have a good heart. Extremely caring, a teacher. There's a teacher on this card. There is a teacher here. Wisdom. And I say wisdom on storytelling. There's an owl. Here's another owl. Birds, within spiritualism, owls are extremely wise. Extremely wise. They can see through bullshit. Very, very wise. Wise old owl. They can see through darkness in, in very dim light. They can. They can. Uh, mm -hmm. They are. They are also uh, birds of prey. They. They. 
stealth. They hunt at night. Yep, healing. There's a flower here, healing. Because of your wisdom, because of what you're teaching, uh, because what you say, the stories that you tell, whatever's going on here, whoever this is going to resonate with, uh, and I'm getting, you may be a preacher or a pastor or a Sunday school teacher or something like that. You may be a school teacher. You, you, but whatever this is, you're in the, the capacity of talking to someone and through talking, telling them short stories, maybe you use wisdom in this and it helps them heal through communication. You're a shaman. A shaman is someone that, uh, uh, a shaman is a person, is a go-between, a conduit, that's what a shaman is, a conduit between the, the physical, the 3D, and the spiritual, okay? Uh, shamans, they are what's in between. They, they communicate spiritually and physically. They if you go to a shaman, you're going to them as a, a 3D, a physical uh, thought process, whatever the case is, you're going to them as that, and they're going to translate or turn that into a spiritual, and they are going to the all spiritualism. But they are the conduit between the two worlds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Shaman lands on top of storytelling and teacher, and they are. Shamans are both storytellers and teachers. Winter. We are in the process of going, it's, it's winter now, it's, it's, it's winter. Hmm. So this could be something that's happening right now. There's something that's happening. And there's another attraction, another card attraction that has a flower with the hummingbird. With the hummingbird. And a hummingbird is, is an extremely, what spirituality, the, the hummingbird represents uh change of direction they can change directions really and it's the only bird it is the only feathered bird that can fly backwards no other bird can other birds can and they other birds don't even hover as they as per se a hummingbird does a hummingbird can can just hover and you go you 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 can read about it. It's going to say that there's other birds can. They actually can't. They're soaring. They're using the 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 updrafts or whatever to soar. That's not a hover. There, that's a soar. Hummingbirds have. They do not need any wind current. They do not need any assistance from updrafts, whatever the gate. They can soar with their little wings and shoot, they can back up. They don't own a bird that can do this. So this means that you have changed direction or you're going to change or you want to change direction, possibly this winter. Now, right now, this is a card that is is representative or indicative to we're doing this now. I want to change direction and I and you you're going towards something that's healing because it landed on top of the healing card. So you're going towards something or, or someone because the flower is there. You are the flower. People are coming towards you or someone is coming towards you to heal. Because you're the healer. You are the one that heals. They are the hummingbirds. They migrate. 
they've they've pulled away from you spirituality they they pull away from you they migrate and then they come back hmm. ready It's just, you, this card is just it's sitting there and they're waiting ready to speak the truth speaking the truth you're ready to speak the truth a leader and soul tribe spiritual warriors my little earth angel you are a leader whatever you're doing you have taken the lead you are you are pushing through the pain of whatever whatever has has caused this transformation and it don't even have to be pain i'm just saying that it don't have to be trauma it don't have to be none of that it could just be you want a change that's what it has right here change could be that you just want to change your life you want to go in a different direction as in a hummingbird you want to change direction mm-hmm see what's on the bottom star you are a star you're shining bright you're very persistent and you're a magician you you possess all of the tools necessary to do whatever you're doing mm -hmm. yes you have the pentacles or you will and it really doesn't matter I mean the pentacles are subjective to the person but emotionally, you're solid, you're stable. Mm -hmm. You talk very well. You, you're in in the. I'm getting the Queen of Swords energy or the King of Swords energy. Uh, could be an emperor. Mm -hmm. And you have an extreme amount of passion at what you do, wands. You have an extreme amount of resilient. You're very, very resilient. Mm -hmm. And you're on the rise. You're not... You're on the rise and... On, this card says journey. You're, you're, you're on your way. Whatever you're doing, you're on your way. Don't let anyone stop you. Mm -hmm. you they may slow you down, but don't let them stop you. Don't let them stop you. Let's go into our tarot, and we're going to mm, the chariot. Hmm, seven. The chariot. Oh, the emperor in reverse. Number four card. The emperor in reverse. And this is spirituality. Uh, this row here is called the spiritual row. You, what you, what your your spiritual attitude, your spiritual awakening, because this is an awakening spread, uh, a block spread, but it's an awakening spread. So it's uh, seven. Seven is perfection. Seven is. It, it can be interpreted as completion, but actually six is, uh, seven is rest. In this situation, though, there's a movement. The chariot is a movement, a means of transportation, a direction. And then we have the empress, the emperor in reverse. You could you could have had issues with being stubborn, uh, like uh, I'm getting, and then we have the Ace of Pentacles in reverse. This is in the Tar. Uh, this is Aries energy. The Emperor in reverse is in Aries energy. 
and then the Ace of Pentacles is in Taurus, Cancer, for if you have, if there's something you want to know, as in a question perhaps, spiritual question, especially spirituality, dealing with spirituality, the answer is yes. Yes, the answer is yes. I'm going to tell you that. I don't know what the question would be, but if you have a question that pertains to uh, something to do with spirituality, if um, what is this? Um, let's do it. Let's do it. In the past, near past, something has caused you to be overburdened, like carrying a lot of weight. A lot of weight. You're carrying a lot of weight from someone else too. There's something something else is causing this to overburden you. You have a lot of responsibility. Major, major overloads here. A lot of pressure. Something. Financial too. It's a it's a financial issue. It's not, it, but it, and I say it's a financial issue. But this is causing a lot more problems than just financial. you it's an emotional issue. You know, it can be a spiritual issue. Let's see. This is uh, the the hub card. Two of Pentacles in reverse. Two of Pentacles in reverse. Juggling. You you have lost. There's, you feel there's a lack of control. There's a loss of control here in your life with something. And it has something to do with the being overburdened. A lot of pressure put on you. You you believe that there's someone with within their spread, there's someone within this energy close to you that's taking you for granted or has taken you for granted. Your goodness, your kindness, your generosity your generosity, they they oh, they seem ungrateful. It could be. You feel like that not only it's like you're obligated to to do what you're doing. Yes. Hmm. The two of the six of wands. This is today. This is present right here. Emperor in reverse and the two of pentacles in reverse. These Both of these cards are in reverse. Your, your stubbornness could be have a part in, in the playing of losing control of everything. It's because you're so stubborn that Things is, is, there's a lack of control here. If you be a little more flexible, uh, and I hate to put it this way, a little more understanding maybe, it, it things will come back into balance. Things are way out of balance right now. For some whatever reason, whatever it is that's in your life, things are way out of balance. Near future. Things are going to stabilize, but you're going to have to find some flexibility here because you, it, it's, it's, you're going to have a difficult time. You have the Ace of Pentacles in reverse, major. You're having some financial issues. That's what this is, financial issues. You're not able to give spiritually like you normally wanted to give. Something is causing issues within your life that is... Uh, you just you're not able to share your abundance. You're not able to, uh, and again, the Ace of Pentacles is a card of loss, uh, loss of control, uh, poor control, a uh, financial control. But finances affect everything. Finances affect spirituality. Finances affect uh, affect emotional, physical too. 
if you can't pay a doctor, what they will tell me, you know, or you can't pay your, your car note, it affects a lot of things. Finances affect a lot of things. But right under this card is the Six of Wands, and the Six of Wands is it's success. It is, um, if it's going off of the other spread that we just had, it's success as in recognition. You're being recognized by whatever you're doing, whatever your your because you're a communicator, you're communicating or or something like that. Whatever it is, it's it's you're being rec recognized for it. That's what this card is. Will it pay off? We're going to see. We ain't, we're not done with the with the and the four the four of the emperor is the number four card, and it's in reverse. That's some loss of foundation right here. The number one card right here. Number one is is uh, hmm. That's twelve right here. Yeah, seven and four is eleven, and one is twelve. Hmm. And this person. Either, maybe someone wants to communicate with you or you need to communicate with someone else because 12, 12, 12, portal 12, 12, 1 and 2 is 3. That means that there's a communication factor here. There's someone or you need to talk to someone about something. I just noticed that. 10 and 2. Is 12. 10 and 2 is 12 right here. Hmm. You see, 7 and 4 is guidance. It's 10. That's guidance. You're, you want guidance from someone. You want to talk to someone about a financial issue. I'm telling you, I, that's what I'm getting here. Let's flip to another coin. Three of Cups in the upright. Three of Cups in the upright is, of course, celebration. You, Within the near past, there was some celebration going on. Something was celebrated. There's socializing. There's gatherings. There's uh, an extreme amount of celebration. Very happy. Very happy. But it lands underneath the Ten of Wands. That's telling me that no one knew that you were overburdened. You didn't tell nobody about it. Nobody knew this. Again, the Four of Wands right next to, to this. Three and four. Four of Wands is the same thing. It's a celebration card. It, it, we, in present time now, we're... Looking at present time, the Four of Wands. It's a coming together, a community. And this is subconscious right here. This is 3D, earthly or 3D. Right now, you are, your ass is overburdened big time. You you juggle, you, you lost balance, lost control, juggling finances around or something like that. That also affects emotions. You are emotionally distraught, could be possibly. And you want to win. You want to succeed. This is a, a winning card here, a, a recognition. You are being, I think that there's a lot of recognition on your part for what you do. Uh, because the last spread, they had teacher and a leader and communication artist. Let's see what else we have here. Oh. Hmm. Six. Two sixes back to back. Three six. No, no, no. That's a four. Hold well, up. Five. This is seven. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, Six of Cups. Six of Cups is... It's near future. In the near future, when I'm saying, I'm talking about this is like big time. This other card started, this other spread, other uh, spread we did, I mean, I think the third card out was changed. This, you, you, this person, whoever this is, wants to change. They want to, to transform. Butterflies. They want to transform. They want to go back towards a spiritual direction. This is that card right here. The Six of Cups is letting go of the past. Letting go of things that mess them all up. There, There's things that within your life that you want to change and uh, you want to fix. And you want to be a success. Six of, you have six here and six here. Six and six, twelve. Twelve, twelve, portal. What I said, six is choice. You want to make a choice. That choice is change. Mm -hmm. Six and four is ten. Again, guidance. This, we... We're looking for some guidance. Ten. Guidance. Three of Pentacles. In reverse. Lands on top of the... On top of the... Chariot, number seven called the Chariot. This person wants to grow spiritually. This is a spiritual road. Top row is spiritual, and near a past. Okay, so what in the in the in the past this person wanted to grow. They were growing. Something happened. I don't know what happened, but if this is you, soul tribe, you were in a growth energy you were or you pretended to I don't think that you did that you possibly could but uh, someone was pretending or they were in a growth energy and then it, it, it fell off now spiritually they want to get back into that growth energy again they want and they get they want the strength to do it to, now today eight number eight. Yes. One. Huh. Hold on a minute. Let me look at something. Seven and four. Eleven and one is twelve. Lands on top of the seven. That's three of pentacles in reverse. Eight. That's eleven and one. Is 12. That's amazing to me. 12, 12. Again. That's amazing. Yes. Someone needs the strength to grow spiritually. And the magician is in reverse right here. Possibly wasted opportunities. Or they were under an illusion. That's why they quit growing spiritually. And or, the magician in reverse is also a deception card. They were deceived one way or another. But the one is in reverse. They... They want the strength to do what they need to do. Wow. The two of wands lands on top of the ten of wands. You want to guess what that is? <laughs> the two of wands in reverse. It lands on top of the ten of wands. And the ten of wands is overburdened. This person fears change. They, they indecisive in the past. This is near past. They were extremely, you were extremely, someone was extremely indecisive. They, 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 the choices they had wasn't the choices they wanted. They didn't, they wanted another choice. And this is uh, earthly right now, 3D. This is uh, things that, this is not spiritual. This is 3D. So, 
if the spiritual part of their life is telling them they need to change, okay, I'm just saying, the spirituality, the spiritual part of their life says, let's say they go to the priest and the priest says, oh, they got religious counselors or whatever, and, and they say, listen, what's wrong is you need to change. You need to change from what you're doing to something else. In actuality, in in 3D, they don't want to. They want to keep doing what they're doing. And they're going to get further and further in a situation that uh, is, is harmful to, to themselves. Let's see what else we have here. Yes. Oh, we see Ten of Cups in reverse. It lands on top of the, the Two of Pentacles in reverse. Ten of Cups in reverse. Super unhappy. Super unhappy. This is not a happy card. Mm -mm. <laughs> no, it's in the it's in the energy of Pisces. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Lovers in reverse, number six. Lovers in reverse. Two. Man, they got 12s all over the front right here. 10 and 2. The 10 of wands and the 2 of wands, 12. The 10 of cups in reverse and the 2 of pentacles in reverse, 12. The 6 of Lovers is the six, and we have the six of, of wands underneath it, 12. Oh, God. <laughs> On the 12th. <laughs> something, 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 to, somebody telling me something here. I'm telling y'all, I feel it. It's, <laughs> yes, the lovers in reverse. Hmm. There's something that caused a some friction here. Something caused some friction. The lovers in reverse. It doesn't have to be lovers. It can be there's a disconnection, a friendship that what went south or, or soured, or or someone was mistreated. Someone was mistreated. Yeah. In the in lands on top of the nine of the nine of wands lands on top of the three of cups and this is in Sagittarius energy. The same it's the same shit. This person when it started off we got to the, the last card in the near past. Now we are, we're going into the near, in the present day. Okay, so we, we hear and then we're going to start off at the present day. This is subconscious right here. This person is, like, whoever this is, you, 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 you hate compromise. You don't like compromise. You set in your ways and, and you don't like to give in. Mm -mm. No, you're very resilient when it comes to what you what you want, how you want it. To, you know, and I'm not going to say like OCD, but it can be borderline OCD, meaning that you want things done a certain way and you're not going to compromise in that. You, you have boundaries and those boundaries are not going to be crossed. Put it that way. You are very, very rigid. Page of Wands lands on top of the Four of Wands. Mm, page of Wands. Obviously, this can be a message, a message of enthusiasm, a message of a happy message. Again, this is in the energy of Sagittarius.
Hmm. We have a Pisces in the middle. That's like, this is a hub. Like this Pisces could be giving, could could be talk. You could be a confidant of Pisces. This could be the confidant. Giving good advice, possibly. Possibly. Not saying that it would. Huh. High priestess in the upright. Yes, you want to you want to go you want to go spiritual. You want to get back toward and it lands on top of the five, I mean the six of cups. You want to let go of everything that has happened. You want to push that aside and you want to try to go into a spiritual direction. Yeah. You want to be trusted again. Or whoever someone because there's lovers right here right above it and and this is on the near future this is the number two card num and two in spirituality so two is love friendship trust this is you want to be trusted you are this person that you're associated with wants to be trusted perhaps they did something that caused you not to trust them. Let's see what's on the bottom of the deck. Yes. Oh yeah. Two of cups in reverse. This person did something that caused you instability. The nine of, of pentacles in in the reverse. And you want to talk to them. The ace of swords. You or you had a, a discussion with them that caused some conflict and argument. The the uh, Five of Wands. Mm -hmm. The Seven of Swords. Hmm. Seven of Swords is it's like this person took something from you. Someone took something from you. And it broke your heart. The Three of Swords. Man, we got swords coming out back to back here. Now, the Four of Swords. It caused you some anxiety, some stress some fear and now you're holding on to everything you have the four of pentacles two fours back to back and there's the whoever this is it shook your foundation your foundation was shaken whatever your your stability whatever you had it hurt you big time foundation wise and this was about materialism this was about pentacles this was about property this was about something material got four and four is eight eight is materialism if you read the numbers and if you try if you interpret the numbers that's what you're going to get six of swords yeah you want you want to get away from what whatever emotionally you want to move away from that you want to go back spiritual you want to let go six of cups you want to let go of whatever and you want to heal. That was in the last spread, the healing. <clears throat> we'll go into our, let's see what we have for. <sighs> uh, let's see. Let's see what I have here. Uh, Gladys. Let's do the dream. It, it's a pretty long dream. Captain, I had a dream last night, and I would love to hear your opinion. In my dream, I woke up, and uh, there was a huge yellow snake stretched out the length of my body, and it was next to me on my left side. My body was paralyzed. The only thing I could move was my eyes. I could see his head and his, it was as big as my fist. A really big snake. I couldn't move, couldn't scream or help myself in any way. I rolled my eyes upward and there was a hand that shot down from the top of my head. Meaning I guess they were standing over the top of them and they, they put their hand out. 
it looked to be a man's hand. I saw the hand and it was about and about six inches of the arm. That's all they could see. Appeared to be a, a big man's hand and I saw it reach down, grab the snake and jerked it away from me just in time, just in the nick of time. I don't know who was attached to the hand. Simultaneously, I was able to move and jump out of, of the bed. I'm assuming that would be to the right because the snake was on the left. Both the snake and hand had disappeared. What is your opinion on this dream? Uh, I watched all of your videos and I am excited about being a part of the Spool Tribe. I love this part of it. Thank you, Gladys. I, I love having you in the Soul Tribe, sending love and light to you and your loved ones. Love you too, boo. I guarantee you that. Love you big, big. Let's see what we got here. We'll see what we can... Let's start off with the color of the snake. You was laying in bed, You and you were asleep. And but let's start off with the bed. In in bed, the bed is is a... A desire for rest. In dream interpretation, a bed is comfort, warmth, a desire for rest, security. It's in your home, and and it's a, a place you want to, a place you want to rest. The color of the snake was yellow, and yellow is uh, indicative in dream interpretation to even in spirituality as a happy, cheerful. Um, the sunshine, sunshine, it's yellow, you know, the big, bright yellow. Uh, uh, but, and, and it also involves, uh, it can, a subconscious, subconscious thought and, and intelligence. Uh, but there's some, some negative sides to the color yellow. The negative sides to the color yellow is that it, it can mean caution. It's a it's a warning, you know everything that yellow light. Uh, it it uh, invokes anxiety and stress. Uh, when you see yellow or a caution sign, it's uh, it can uh, it can also mean fear, cowardice. You're you're yeller. You know when somebody calls you yellow, that means you're a coward. Um, and it, it can be some jealousy involved there. So, and I'm just saying this, that in dream interpretation, dreams are messages. It's a message to you, Gladys. This is what this is. And a lot of people, they dream and they don't even worry about it. They don't, it's just a dream to them. To spiritual individuals, dreams are a big deal. It's messages. Um, there's a lot of snake, snakes, uh, mean change it's transformation snakes shed their skin they tr and, and the shedding of skin means a transformation or a change uh, a letting go of, of the old skin and putting on a new skin uh, subconsciously snakes invoke fear I mean fear and worry so this could for you mean that you have some fear and worry going on about something. And the size of the snake matters big time because that invokes what, that could mean the amount of fear and worry that you have well, because of the problems that you, you're dealing with. Not sure what they are, but uh, the, the degree. And it can mean the, the amount of transformation needed to solve whatever problems you have. Um, When you say that you was laying there and you couldn't move, um, that is, is, I mean, fear paralyzes people. Instead of running, they can't move. It's the fainted goat syndrome. Instead of running, they faint. I don't know if you've ever seen what the goats faint, but, and, and all of this is caused because of the changes that's going to have to take place. You, you fear the changes that have to take place and uh, the only things that could move with you were your eyes. You know you can see what you have to do 
but you can't move to do it. You can't move to get out the way or run from the snake. Um, the side too, what side it's on matters also. The left side, you said the snake was on your left. That matters big time. Uh, uh, left can mean a, a directional change, directional uh, uh, the, the snake being on your left side yeah the snake being on your left side means that if you wanted to go left that there's an obstacle there you can't go left okay and whatever is on the left is is left can mean vulnerability uh, in 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 can in spirituality it can mean vulnerability it can mean a feeling of being lost if you go left no matter what left has always been a a a direction of trouble okay I'm gonna just say that <laughs> so those that are on the left don't 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 send me no comments and fuss me. I'm just saying. <laughs> uh, on the on the and after the snake was taken away from you, I'm assuming I'm, it's not in here, but I'm assuming that you jumped out of bed on the right. Okay, so you went right and um, hell in scripture and in in uh, what it is in uh, John. I think it's John twenty one. Uh, it says the right side is always on the side of uh, truth. And then the left side is always on the side of deception. They're always trying to deceive you one way or another. And in Matthew 25, it, says, it talks about separating the sheep and the goats. The sheep are going to be put on the right and the goats are going to be on the left. You know, so, uh, and sheep are, are meek and humble and and uh, they uh, they stay together. They herd animals. They, of course, goats are too. But goats are mischievous. They they and you gotta watch them. They'll hook you. Yeah, the goat broke my mama's hip. Yeah, broke a I think a femur. I think it was a femur that broke. Might have been her hip. Anyway, a damn old goat did that to her. Uh, you know. Uh, Right, right brained I'm sure that you've heard of right brained left brained people. Uh, when it comes to that, the right brained people are very intuitive, very creative, the very emotional, uh, gifted. And uh, that's the side of a person that's what's called, uh, um, when it comes to that, that's called the. Uh, Uh, what I'm trying to say, the head over heart decisions, okay? That's that's what the, the right and the left brain, the left brain is the logical part, the head decision. The right is the heart decisions. That's what you're going to make. And the, sometimes the right will get you in trouble because you make a heart decision when you shouldn't have. You should have made a logical decision with your with the left part of your brain. You know, it gives you the critical thinking part numbers math that's the left part of your brain reasoning gifted earth angel soul tribe we are often what's called balanced brain we we use both and we it is indicative of us that we use both we we make a decision based on heart and head a lot of times we lose track too though we make some some messed up choices um uh, Yes, but anyway, I believe that you have a decision to make, Gladys. Yeah, this dream is a message about a choice you have to make a decision, especially coming 12-12, the portal today. Um, the hands are, are indicative. That hand that pulled a snake out the way is a, um, is, um, is a tool. Hands are tools. It's a communication device. Our hands. We speak with our hands. It's a a. Uh, it can be used as a a gesture of defense or a gesture of offense. Meaning, you know, you whoop somebody's ass, or you're just going to defend yourself. 
you know, or you'll just say stop. Uh, and it, and they also express emotion. People speak with their hands all the time. Very, very important communication. Um, um, so, I don't know. I think that, that uh, this is a, you have obstacle and obstacle, a major obstacle in the way, which is would have been the snake. And something is going to remove that obstacle for you to make a choice, for you to do what you think you need to do. What that all entails, I don't know. But that is my interpretation of this dream. I hope that you enjoyed the interpretation. Gladys, thank you for sending it to me. Um, Mary, what happens if you and your twin don't work out? And you have talked about how we should know our twins. Well, it, there's nothing that says you and your twin have to work out. You don't have to work out. You, if your twin acts the donkey and don't want to come into union with you, let's say you're awakened, Mary, you are awakened, and you know your twin, but your twin, possibly your twin is awakened, but they, a lot of times twins have a wondering eye. They not satisfied with what you have offer, whatever the case is, and they are bored to death. They want to go party over there at Carmickville on Toxic Street. Yeah, they want to do that. Well, you know, you can abandon that situation. You have every right to abandon that situation. You're going to feel them. You're always going to feel them. Possibly they're going to go to drinking so much over there on, on Toxic Street that they're going to be numb and they're not going to be able to to feel you anymore okay and that's fine you don't worry about that go find yourself some divine soulmate and you take up from there you continue your journey either alone or with a a soulmate there's nothing in the rule books that says you have to take a twin mm -mm. absolutely not aka elena aka elena how did you initially get introduced to Tara and other types of readings? I noticed with you and other fit my other favorite readers, you seem to have a lot of knowledge on more than just the meanings of the cards. You know some numerology, history behind it, other cultures and practices, etc. I am sure, as with anything, curiosity and time leads to knowledge base. But for someone very new to the uh, to spiritual practices, is there any place or readings or cards, decks that you would recommend as somewhere to begin to learn? Thank you, as always, Kim. Uh, very young. Like I've said before in other videos, I started off with my grandmother, great-grandmother, not my grand, great-grandmother. She anointed me with oil. I didn't know it at the time. I was too young. I didn't even know what she was doing. I was, she gave me some vanilla wafers and I was eating my vanilla wafers and she prayed over me and, and did her thing. She was very gifted. She was a traitor. She was a healer and she was, she could read. Uh, my two aunts, her daughters, my great aunts, they were readers, the good ones too, very, very gifted. One gave me a book that I read and I studied, gave me a, and it was more about just a regular deck of cards, playing cards. And, but it also had Tara instructions in it. I read, I studied it, and I began to, and they, my, the aunt that lived closest to me told me, you were very gifted. You just have to develop the gift. Mm -hmm. That's all you have to do. It's not hard. And she gave me some instructions. She, she taught me a little bit. The other aunt gave me another book that I learned, I read, um, get you a beginner's tarot deck and start with that and try to learn it's not important the meaning of the card it's important I shouldn't say that it's important the meaning of the card but what's more important is the placement of the cards and how they relate to each other that's the most important part that's the gifted part to learn how to interpret what they mean together not singly together if you once you learn that and once you develop that skill, 
it's and of course numerology you can learn that that's a that's a that's a, a, a you know you can get books on that you can go to Barnes and Noble buy cards they have cards there so that's a, a huge section of cards um uh, uh I, I mean and that's about it you know it's it's uh it's a gift that you have to develop. It's not something that, it's a learned, that you can acquire it by learning. Of course you can. But wait, what makes it special is the gift that you have. Like dream interpretation. It's a gift. It's not something that, and a lot of times my interpretation goes totally against what someone else has. That's okay, you can. Your, you just means yours is different than someone else. And eventually we'll see who's right and who's wrong. <laughs> so I love you God loves you big time I hope you happy with my the answers to my question Mary and A.K. Elena um, stay close to God I love you big big peace out